your favorite Broadway play, LaChance? My favorite Broadway play of all time? Hmm. Wow. That's a, no one has ever asked me that question. I got musical, but my favorite Broadway play. Wow. That's such a good one. You know, it's a play that people really are not familiar with. It starred Denzel Washington and a sister whose name I can't remember right now, but it was a romance between Denzel and this woman. Of, and it was about their struggle. It was in the, it was early nineties. It was called Checkmates. And it was about their struggle to maintain this middle, upper middle class black life in New York and the, the, and the things outside of their lives that, was, that were pulling them apart. It was brilliant, but it just didn't get enough tra traction. You never even heard of it, probably. No, but, I um, thought you was going to say Fences. I was like, oh, yeah. That. <laughs> no, Fences is awesome. All of August Wilson is awesome. But yes. my personal favorite that I've seen in my life was Checkmates. And then second to that was um, For Colored Girls. Mm. Uh, oh yes. yeah yes. marcia they said uh the the uh actress with him was marcia jackson marcia jackson yes yeah, she was oh she was bad i don't know what's up with that weird that sister is but they were so good they were phenomenal together and you yes. could just feel the chemistry and the electricity and it was seeing this black beautiful couple on broadway doing this intense play about love and loving up on each other you know it was just so good to see all that i loved it mm. yes as you're talking, and I know Joy almost to jump in, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm looking at you know not just your credits but your your talent because again you know I I saw the color purple a couple of times after that and that first time doesn't to me even compare with like it was the best your performance was the best, but there are a lot of people that are again more famous or more you know that don't have the same level of talent and there's just you know this you just mentioned somebody I never heard of before your favorite play Marsha Jackson who was amazing but people don't get the opportunities. I feel like there needs to be a space where we, you know, where there's equity for the talented, where people who are talented get seen, those who aren't, we got to stop elevating. And I want to, you know, lead the charge there. Uh, yeah. So who's your, 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 also your favorite person, your, you know, entertainer it could be a, a, an actress or an actor or a dancer or a singer who doesn't get enough rec, who doesn't get enough attention. Wow. Um, that's such a good question. Wow, because I, I got a list of folks that I feel are super talented and, and they just don't get the-, the Name them. Get. Um, uh, there's, there's this beautiful friend. She actually happens to be a friend of mine as well, but she's an incredible singer. And her name is Kapathia Jenkins. She's like phenomenal. She's a, this beautiful, beautiful sister. She even left New York and moved down to Georgia because she was like, you know, I, I just got to go make my way another way. And she's still making her way. Mm. But then another sister that I work with, her name is Lilius White. You might know Lilius. She's a Tony winner as well um, for In the Life. But Lilius was also the lead. We were, we were Hercules muses together, the animated mm. feature Hercules. So Lilius is, was, the main, was the main muse. And Lilius is a Tony award winning actress woman of a certain age, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant singer who I feel needs to be up there with, you know, Angela Bassett and all, mm -hmm. and Halle Berry and all the other sisters up there and Viola doing their thing. She needs to be up there with them too. Spell her last name? Um, Lilius White. White, oh. Lilius okay. White, yeah. I'm she, looking up everybody as you, oh yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've seen her before. You probably have because she was on the get down. She does work mm -hmm. okay. here and there, you know, but she she needs that, like, you know, that not being able to out the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she needs, you know, the brother with the mask that had his mask cap on waving at her, you know, <laughs> with the big nose. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. OK, I'm the opposite of Lamont. I'm a mu musical theater nerd, straight play nerd. I saw you twice on Broadway in The Color Purple. And I've seen Rent is my number one three times. Yeah. And one time I saw Mel B and she was sick that day and had to get like that shot singers get in their butt when they have to perform. Have you ever had a moment like that? Like where you had a sick mm -hmm. night that you still had to perform? Yeah, my opening night of Color Purple. Was really? it the opening night? Opening night, the night before opening night, I was out. I was out of the show. And that's the night that the critics come. So they asked oh, wow. the critics not to come because I was out the night before opening, but I had 
I think I must have had the flu or something because my throat locked up. I had a, one of those when you, when the blood vessel breaks in your eye. Oh, wow. That happened. I was a hot mess. And my mother said, you were just nervous. You need to calm down. Yeah. You know, you got a black mother. She always tell you, just go have a glass of water. You can <laughs> yeah. <fly."> so, <laughs> the robotussin. Robotussin. You know, right. Just go drink some water. You can get out there and do it. So, you know, I tried my best and I got through it. But man, I was so sick. I was sick as a dog. And but usually when that happens, you know, you do either get that B12 shot mm. and they they give you that shot of that B12 and it pumps you up and gives you this this rush that you can get out there and do it. I don't know if it's if it really happens or if it's just they they got have us believing that it does now. Wow. Or they even give you like, you know, if your cords are swollen, you got to take the steroid to bring the swelling down. But that's dangerous because it gives you the illusion that you really can sing when you really can't. And mm. so it might make it worse. So yeah, I've had to get out there and perform sick. Have you I, ever had a Patty Lapone moment? What, forgetting the lyrics? Lapo- no, no, with no. somebody with the phone. I'm yelling sorry, at somebody. I thought she said That's Patty LaBelle. I, I heard That's you Patty LaBelle. Patty LaBelle. Patty LaBelle. That's who I was thinking, Patty LaBelle. Because <laughs> I was going to say, yes, I have had a Patty LaBelle moment. <laughs> but a Patty Lapone moment when she what? When she- Yelling at people, uh, filming her, stop the play. To- <laughs> Ooh. Nah, I haven't done that. I did have someone yell at me on stage once as if we were in our living room. This this guy was so into the show and it was it was the color purple. And he was so, so, so into the show. He was like yelling back at me and talking back at me. So finally I just started, I broke the fourth wall, which is that imaginary wall between us and the audience. And I just started singing directly to him because no one else was in the room with this man. He just, he was just so effusive. He couldn't help himself, but uh, yeah, it's happened. I've had some haters too, though. Oh. Had some haters out there. What, what do they do? Yeah, what what happens with that? You know, sometimes you know people they forget that they're in the theater. They that we can hear you, like right. we, <laughs> we can see you. You know, when you start pulling out your phone and start uh. eating your chips or whatever, we hear and see all of that. So we are. It's not a movie. So one time, this this uh, gentleman, I'll call him. Um, was a little elderly man, front row, you know, matinees, we call them the blue hair crowd, right? So there yeah. was this, um, this elderly man in the front row who fell asleep, right? So he just was in the front row asleep in front of me, sound, sound asleep. So, you know, I got down to the front of the stage and I was singing extra loud, stamping <laughs> my feet in the moments trying to wake his behind up. So someone, they noticed I was doing that. They started nudging him and he yelled and he said, I've seen this play before. I've already know what she's doing. I'm here because you made me come to see this uh, again. And I told you. Uh, I want to. I was like, oh my God. Uh, they made the man come. He didn't want to uh, come. He needed his nap. And they made him come anyway. <laughs> ah, I did. I, I, I fell asleep once um, as well. Front row. How? Oh. Front row? It you can happen. It's not, it wasn't during though. a musical. Oh, it was a straight it was play. A, it was a straight play. I won't I, at the what's that theater downtown near NYU? A skirball? No, the public? No. no. Yeah, public theater. Mm-hmm. Was uh oh, you know, one of those really slow, not like two trains slow, but just <laughs> that's another. I will, you know, I work a lot. So th- if I sit too long, right, I right, could right, be right. out. And I was out and it was Felicia Rashad. Ooh, and I yeah. know my mouth was oh. open. Oh. No, my mouth was open. You know, was I see snoring? legendary. Was breathing I, heavy. I probably was. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, was I, saw, I saw Iceman Cometh um, and Denzel was in that. And it's a four hour play. And he does like a 20 minute monologue in the middle of the play. And there was somebody in the box seat that was asleep. And I could see him. The performer in me could see him looking at this person during like, are you kidding me right now? I'm doing a monologue. That's oh, hard. man. That's hard. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's, it's, it's the play. plays that y'all go to because the plays that I've been to, they're not Broadway. But you went you, to one. You went not, to the Temptations. No, I went to one Broadway play, but I go to scores, dozens even. Of the other kind That's of two, plays, right? you know, like, name them, you know, like uh, why, <laughs> Mama, why did Daddy cheat? You know those plays. You're not falling asleep. You're not falling asleep yeah. on those. You're not because the rats not, are probably scurrying across your feet while you're there. The feet are stuck to the. Not because everybody's talking. Everybody's at in the, the play. Beacon Theater. Everybody right, is um, in the play. Shout out to the Beacon Theater. Eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. Where you can your feet will literally stick to the floor at the Beacon Theater. Um, <laughs> yeah. Don't at me. Don't at me. It's Friday. 
LaShawn's is here. Uh, Lamont King, Mr. Lamont King is here. Joyelle Nicole Johnson, she's here as well. Uh, LaShawn, uh, when you got the color purple, were you up against somebody that might've been a household name and you beat them out? And if uh, so, how? I don't know if I would say they were an, an, a, um, a household name, but some significant actors out there. Um, I know that for one who happens to be a dear friend of mine, name is Sekhan Sang Bla, she was up for it too. Um, but you know, she ended up being Nettie. She ended up being my Nettie, my first Nettie. And then Renee Elise Goldsberry was Nettie on Broadway. But oh. when we did it in Atlanta, she was my first Nettie. I've had four Nettie's, well, three Nettie's. I had Sekhan was my first, Rutina Wesley was my second, Ooh. and um, Renee was my third. So I call wow. them my Nettie's because they were my Nettie's. Mm. They were. But, um, but yes, yeah, so I was up against Sekhan and a couple other sisters in New York. But um, man, when I auditioned for The Color Purple, it was one of those things where um, I just was, I, I, it didn't even feel like I was working because I felt like I felt so connected to the character from the beginning. I just really, I love, Color Purple is my favorite all time book forever, forever and ever and ever and ever. Because, you know, Alice Walker, whom I got to know through working on that play, the genius woman that she is, I think she really is like an Orisha. I think she's just, she's just here in the physical body, but really she's like a priestess because she's just so mm. brilliant and and just powerful, her energy, you know, she's brilliant. But anyway, I got to know her and and we talked a lot about where these characters came from in her. And she said, you know, she was just like a conduit. She said she would sit down and the, the characters would just flow through her. And I believe it because it's just so, just so um, organic and natural. Like everyone can relate to these characters in the color purple, I think, no matter mm. who they are, you know? And, and what's interesting is people, when they think about Celie, they don't think about Celie being a lesbian, but Celie was a lesbian, you know? And I had to tell that to someone. They said, have you ever played a lesbian on Broadway? And I said, twice. And they said, well, which shows? And I said, Color Purple. And they were like, mm -hmm. you're not a lesbian in the Color Purple. I'm like, I'm sorry. The only love song is between me and a woman. Yeah. So, you know, people, oh. people don't think of it that way. But I say that's the brilliance of Alice Walker because it's all about love, you know? It's just about the love you don't think about who's loving who you don't even care you know well, also so, in the movie that most people remember it was a little toned down a little more toned yes. down than the book was so yeah that's if you true. didn't read the book you wouldn't even you wouldn't even got that yeah that's true but they loved it yeah yeah what up not with not yeah. back in the 80s y'all got that later but you when the movie was out you nobody on this call knew that that's what time it was i was like five if, years old and i if knew you ain't right if you ain't read the book so this part right here Okay, all right, Lamont. It was, it was, you know, the movie. It uh, uh, was it Spielberg. He definitely toned it down. He said he it, did. It definitely toned down from yeah. the book, but yeah. I think it was clear and in the play, you yeah. know, for sure. Uh, what was the second one? Second role that you played was it? Oh, it's right? a, a a Broadway musical that I did with Adina Menzel called If Then. I did oh. it um in 2015. Not yeah, it ran on Broadway. Um. A little over a year. It didn't run long, but we toured with it. It was a great, it was a cult. It's a cult favorite. People love it. And, um, but I was straight up, had my girlfriend. We were loving each other. We still call each other wifey. Her name is Jen Kalella. I love her to death. She's amazing. Um, but yeah, so that was the second time. Mm -hmm. now, now, to that point, uh, in film and TV, especially in TV, like if, you, if you're an actor real strong and, and you play a character so well that people only see you as that you can end up getting typecast is, is that the same does that work the same way in theater I think so you know it's changing now a little bit but um I know for most of the roles I've played in my life I've always played um you know the 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 uh the black woman that had something traumatic happen to her you mm -hmm. know like most roles that I've played have been those type of roles. And maybe, I don't know, it's because I'm dark skin and it's theater, I don't know. But my first leading role on Broadway, I was, it was, it was a show called Once on This Island and I was young and new in the city and everything. But I played this lovely young girl who was in love with this, dark skin girl was in love with this light skin boy on an island. It was basically like the Little Mermaid set in the West Indies. Hmm. Um, but it was, um, but I ended up being, you know, killed and turned into a tree. Another, another story, but. Um, <laughs> I don't like that. No, don't yeah, like that. yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, and then in ragtime, I'm beat to death by a cop and then color purple. Yeah, it's just like very traumatic characters. And so I feel that's just the way things have been written for 
the stereotypical look of a black woman on stage, but that is changing drastically. It really is changing. We're starting to notice a, a little bit more um, color blindness. You know, I'm yeah. starting to see that a little bit, or we're not colorblind, colorism is starting to, people are becoming more aware of colorism.